there are different issues about language as a political issue in that context. One, in terms of just a, 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 a black people who were denied or who, whose languages were not promoted and advanced in good time, which is what we call colonialism. So it, it, lots of people find it difficult. I actually want to speak to them to say, now we want their children to be uh, uh, speaking so to their own succeed. So there's also that colonial mentality to say, if you speak English well, then you're going to be successful in the industry. And I said to them, Chinese come here, but about four months after they just four and three months can begin speaking English, and they thrive. So there's a difference between learning a language and being knowledgeable. So it's a political issue where we have to really help get our people to accept that there's a difference between learning and language. Language you can learn in time, you can learn it anyway. So that's the other political part about our colonial past of, 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 of being colonialized. On the other hand, around Africans, I'm saying from where I see, I appreciate their protection of the language because it's in line with what you want to do, to say people must be taught and communicated with in a language they know and they understand. But it becomes an issue when a language in a public institution becomes a tool for admissions and for policies, then it's a problem. Because then you use your language to block other people who don't speak the language. It, it would be unfair to say, uh, like the University of, of Pretoria or Stade or, 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 or Prince David to say that they can only teach in Africa. It's not every child is speaking African. So they're using now the language to, to close other people out. And that's where we say it becomes also a problem. The language is used as a tool of division, of the tool of excluding, of exclusion. And since it, it's used as a tool that really does not help us with cohesion. So there are different issues about language. And it again becomes political. No, what say it was we approved this in 2010. And then Eastern Cape was the first one to run. And it took us long because we started something new, something new. But to work with both parents, the language agency, universities, researchers, develop material. So it took us a long time to get it. But before implementing, we wanted to assess that pilot with the rapid assessment. We did the rapid assessment that we did to and got the results. Then we agreed to say, let's use 23, 24, 23 to prepare now for the full rollout. So from 2025, what we're going to do, we're going to start phasing it in. Because we've assessed, we're comfortable that the pilot really has given us the confidence to plunge into the program. So next year, 2025, we're starting to phase in in grade four. And we then phase in year after year because it requires the resources, it requires the retraining of teachers, but it also requires the whole education committee to be on board. 